As many of you guys know, when I go to my silver dealer to buy silver, sometimes he has miscellaneous foreign stuff and other copper and nickel things. In today's hunt, we're not gonna hunt the world coins yet. We'll do that for another video, but I wanna see if this bag of goodies right here was worth it. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a bag of foreign coins I'm saving for another hunt. Similar to the one I did previously, this is another bag of the rest of the world coins and trade tokens and who knows what else stuff is in here. I saw some lucky tokens, some lucky pennies, some transit tokens, some commemoratives, just a lot of different things. We'll go through this bag in another video. I spent $35 on this bag and I spent $65 on this bag and what he said was in here was a whole bunch of V nickels and Buffalo nickels and a few extra copper stuff. But when I looked through the little bag here, I noticed I saw a couple of fatty Indian head scents or at least a flying eagle scent. And so that's why I figured spending $65 for this might not have been a bad idea. We'll have to see how I do. Anyway, I'm excited to get into this bag. Let me dump it out, get it sorted, and we'll see what we got in this little bag. All right, figured I'd start with all of the nickel stuff, not expecting any better dates or any varieties, uh, things like that. But we did have a couple of the nickels here in a flip. And that looks like that's gonna be a Denver minted 1938 in nice shape. And then we also have a 1937 San Francisco. The 37S looks maybe a high AU and the 38D Looks like it might be a low mint state. That's probably why they're in a flip. Like I said, I don't expect any better dates or any varieties. Of course, I'll be looking for any better dates and varieties on my nickel coin hunts mat, but we'll have to see. Either way, the mission of this is to get them separated, get them sorted by year and mint if there is mints, and then see if any of them could upgrade my current collection. And if not, just go ahead and make maybe a small subset for someone down the road. Let me do that now, and I'll be back unless I find something great along the way. All right, we've got all the nickels sorted except for the Buffalo nickels, just the V nickels. And it looks like this was somebody's little collection here because we have every single nickel, 1897, 98, 99, and then 1900, 01, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and even two 1912 Ds. And when I saw that we had all of them, I thought maybe one of these would be the 1912S, which is a very valuable rare one but they're both Denver minted, unfortunately. And even though 1912 Denver is a better date, it's only worth a lot more in higher grades. And uh, with a little bit of Liberty showing on this one, it's a slightly better condition, but really only worth about a buck more than the other ones. Either way, only missing a 12S from 1897 all the way to 1912. And then we also have an 1893. And then a second year, 1884. It's pretty slick, but still a better date. And then a first year issue with some acid rust or corrosion on it. It's in pretty decent shape other than that. And it is the better one. They made two in 1883, one without the word sense at the bottom and one with the word sense. And the reason why they added sense on the second edition is people were gold plating these. It's also known as the racketeer nickel. And it was looking like it was a $5 gold piece. So they put the word sense on it to not confuse vendors. Either way, it's good seeing the first couple of issues here. One in 1893 and then a whole bunch of these in a row. And so definitely a nice starter lot for someone. I've already double checked all these against my personal collection. And of course, none of them can upgrade, but still a nice starter lot. I'm going to get the starter lot pulled to the side out of this, add the other ones to my collection, and then we'll go on to the Buffalo Nickels next. All right, before I do the nickel sort, I figured I'd let you know we had 21 different V nickels in this tube and another 12 different V nickels in this tube. So pretty good couple of sets. And no, I haven't forgotten about the copper. We'll do that last. All right, let me get these sorted and I'll be back after I do that. One hour later. All right, I've got the Buffalo nickel sorted. And to my surprise, this is a really good starter set. Probably was somebody's Buffalo nickel set. Only missing 24 total nickels out of the entire Buffalo nickel series. There are a couple of better dates up here, but a lot of the better dates, of course, are missing. We have no type one 1913 PDNS, but we do have the 1913 type 2P, no DNS, 1914 P, no DNS, 1915 P, we had two of those, decent dates, and there's no um, nicodate on these. These are all 
properly dated. So definitely low grade, but at least they don't have any acid damage. We have the 1916 P and S, no D. We have 1917 P and D, 1918's P and D, and 1919 P and S. Moving on to the 20s, we don't have a D or S 1920. We don't have the 21 P or S. Uh, we don't have the 23 S. We don't have the 24 D or S. We don't have the 25 S. And we're missing 26 and 27, both Denver and San Francisco mints. But we do have a lot of the other mints covered. And from 1928 and on, we're only missing one nickel, the 37 D, which of course I think I have in my extra rules. So all 28 P, D, and S, 29 P, D, and S, 30 only has P and S, 34 only has P and D, and then P, D, and S of both 35, 36, and like I said, we're missing that 37, but I kept the nice nickels in their flips, so that's the 37 S and the 38 D. And for those wondering, I did check for all of the three leg varieties on the ones we have dates of. I did check for any two feathers quickly, though, at a glance. And of course, I looked for the over mint marks and the RPMs. No varieties as expected. And then we had four dateless ones, and I already flipped them around and couldn't make out if there was a mint mark on the back. So I'm just gonna leave these as needing Nicodate for another Nicodate video down the road. I think what I'll do now is grab some of my extra nickels and see if I can plug in a few of these slots if I have them. And once I do that, I'll roll them up for a, a subset. And again, there's some better dates in here and some nicer coins. And I'm just gonna double check some of these to see if they possibly upgrade any of my teens Buffalo nickels, because if they do, I'd like to, of course, do that. Let me get that done, and then I'll be back with letting you know what I found, if I found anything for my personal collection. All right, we've got a couple of starter lots here. I was able to add a few more nickels for my personal collection. Now we have 41 of the 63 Buffalo nickels that were minted. All of these have legible dates and or mint marks. None of them have any acid damage or been nicodated, although a few have a little bit of environmental issues, but they were such nice detail. I figured I'd make that into a set. And then we have 26 uh, different Buffalo nickels for a backup lot. So a couple of nice Buffalo nickel lots to go with the V nickel lots over here. And the last bag we have is this one. I'm gonna quickly run through it. I'll dump it out. I'll quickly run through it and then we'll cover it together. And that'll pretty much wrap it up. Let me get that done really quick. All right, for the copper goodies, surprisingly, we had a variety one, type one, little silver trime. And I can't make out the date. We know it's a variety one based on the lack of detail on the back. But uh, based on what I can see, it's definitely going to be an 1851, 52, or 53. Probably an 1853. And there is no New Orleans mint mark. But that's silver, not copper. It was in the copper bag. We'll take that as a bonus. We've got a couple of Flying Eagle scents, both 1858. This is the nicest one of the two. And I'm going to have to check that against my personal collection. And for those wondering... It is the large letters, and I believe this one's the small letters based upon the A and the M. We also have a pretty nice 1862. Take a look at this. Holy cow. Definitely got to check that against my personal collection. That's a beauty, and I don't find fat Indian head scents looking like that too often. A couple of common Indian head scents there, and a pretty nice, you know, wheat scent. It was in there, 1839. It's in a flip. I'll check that against my personal collection. We had a couple of 1864 two cent pieces and an 1865. And these are the common ones with the uh, large letters, not the small letters. And then a whole bunch of large cents here. We've got an 1817. You can make out the date just barely. We've got an 1827 that's been cleaned with some corrosion. We've got an 1838, I believe. I double checked it. It looked like a five at first. A damaged 1840, uh, 1849, a little bit pitting, but pretty nice shape overall. And then the newest one was an 1854 with some environmental corrosion on it as well. And then we had another one that uh, is dateless and I could spend some time on it and figure out which head it is, but I'm not going to do that. It's pretty rough. Let me quickly run through all these, see if anything upgrades anything in my personal collection. If it does, I'll let you know. But either way, let me come back with a recap of this fun copper and nickel hunt. All right, a quick double check. Nothing up here could upgrade anything except for I did make the call. This was the 1862 I had and uh, mine has a little less feather detail and a little bit less lettering on the ribbon. So I used the one from today's purchase in my album, took the one from my album and put it up here. So 
After going through everything, I think this is a pretty productive bag. You guys let me know. I mean, at the end of the day, we spent $65 on the bag. And when you think about the amount of coins I got, I mean, heck, even the fatty and the couple of flying eagles, that's about $60 in value right there alone. So we got everything else kind of free. Not really, but technically just about based on what we paid for it. The last thing to do is in another video, I'll go through this bag. We paid $35 for it. We'll have to see how we did on that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this copper and nickel hunt. If you did, I certainly would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.